Hello. This video is about reality and whether we actually live in it or while believing to live in it, do we otherwise live in a world of images wholly mediated by machines and programs whose purpose is to anesthetize us to our actual conditions? And, and if you were in a matrix simulation, is this the kind of thing that you would click on to pass the time? Why did you click on this, by the way? Did a machine show it to you? Ah, oh, don't mind that. This is real, okay? Me, you can trust. I'm authentically trying to find meaning that's resistant to the feeling that this is all a superficial show, that some indifferent god left on repeat and then walked out of the room. It's about a reality that doesn't feel exactly real. Disregard that. And fair enough, you might say, what does it matter what the world feels like? Reality is independent of my feelings about it. But I think, you know, if reality is real, you're a part of it. You're one of its many aspects. So you reasonably have some access to the sense it makes or doesn't make. For my part, there's something of a thesis that I have about reality, and it's that it feels thin these days. Don't worry, we're gonna get that fixed. Reality feels thinner, in fact, than we believe it should be, or thinner than it could be. And as this is sometimes a philosophy channel, there are a bunch of words that I could put up here to explain what reality has been thought to be. The thing is though, I don't really like those kinds of explanatory videos so much, and I don't really much care for any of these particularly either. Uh, anyway, what are the symptoms of a thin feeling reality? The same movie over and over again. Feeling like we're trapped in a loop where every story is the same one over and over, over and, and over and over again. Where content splits off as an endless repetition of itself. The incommensurability of value, where these are worth one and a half million, three million, twelve million dollars, What's value then? 22 million humans like this advertisement. Yes, 22 million people were grateful that they were being advertised to. Where your choice of leaders for the global empire is either a deranged reality TV host. I'm a very stable genius. Or an easily confused septuagenarian. Back in 2009, during the so-called Great Recession, the president asked me to be in charge of managing that piece, then President Trump. Excuse me, Freudian slip. That was the last president. He caused, anyway, that was President Obama when I was vice president. It's that obvious thinness where brands are people, people are brands, and these days, millions of people's social interactions in a day amounts to this. Uh, we're not even close. Or this. Kanye West uh, is is uh, saying months. that Kid Cudi is fake for being friends with Pete Davidson, or not Pete Davidson, sorry, for being friends with Billie Eilish. This. Gene Baudrillard. Or this. So first we had COVID, now World War III, and they just announced that they're gonna cancel Shrek 5, so worst week ever. You guys saw that? Was that on my side of the stream or your side? That was weird. Ah, I see. That's what the pill does. Wait, so is he, is he, are we, uh, what the hell is going on? You know, no, no person, individual actually believes, you know, these are real social interactions, but eh, what else are you gonna do? Turn it all off? We live in a society. And this is it. And we should be grateful because no previous generations had all this. So you had better enjoy it. I said you better enjoy it. Okay. 
So this is the show the machine gods put on for you before they walked out of the room. I mean, as a Matrix, is this really the best they could do? Is this the best of all possible matrices? Because I'm not even very creative and I still feel like I could make a, a better one than this. But as it is, I guess we generally believe in this one. We're trapped in reality as little habit machines, repeating habits, pretending someone out there knows exactly what is going on. But that doesn't always feel like enough. We imagine something out there bestows this with value, an original world that gave rise to this simulated one. There's real meaning, if not here, then in the past or in the future or somewhere just beyond what everybody else can see. So there's this intellectual property called the matrix, which asks a pretty interesting question. What if all of it was fake? Now the story's answer to this is yes, everything is fake. Every doubt you have your right to have because life today is largely a consensual hallucination produced by machines and not just machines made of metal, but machines of an indifferent routinized logic in order to control you. Sound familiar? I hope that people come to know the meta brand and the future that we stand for. But this film, unfortunately, both times it was made, very quickly annihilates all the really interesting questions that might follow. Like, is reality a misrecognition? What if it, reality, all of it, was only ever images? Is some version of the lie actually the truth? And maybe most importantly, is the truth itself the lie? Maybe we voluntarily believe the lies because we know the truth isn't true. Is that not the reality of the matrix? The questions we could be asking is now that we've seen through the, the thin surface to the code giving rise to it, now that we've awoken to reality, decided on the red pill, you know, yada, yada, yada. Now, what are we gonna do about it? What in our lives might change tomorrow to cope with that realization? Nope, 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 nope. Basically, the Matrix tees up a whole bunch of worthwhile philosophical questions about what it means to live in this modern condition, the search for meaning, and answers it with what? <laughs> Religion again? Plato, you mother... Before we move on, I would like to thank my sponsor for this video, Gucci. If you're sick of those quarantine pajamas and feel like it's time to get out there, Gucci makes high heels and purses and some other stuff. Personally, I wear it all the time. I can't take it off. The stitch quality is just... And the designs are very tasteful and functional. And you can wear Gucci out to your hallway parties or just to lounge around to read theories about needless, meaningless reproduction and, and stuff. You might be surprised that I agreed to partner with Gucci. I too was surprised when they reached out to me, given my long history of spreading Italophobic stereotypes online. But then they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Offering an exchange, they would insert some theory books into their new ad campaign. Sexy, mysterious, glamorous, expensive, and educational. Everything that we hope life could be. Gucci, welcome to the reality you deserve. Uh. The Matrix, like the Gucci campaign, I inspired features Jean Baudrillard's book as a prop. Parfait, an empty prop hollowed out of any of its content. An empty prop hollowed out of any of its content. It's almost like they know what they're doing. Almost. At this stage in the history of the sign, there's really no contradiction in using a book as a prop to add a dash of edgy profundity to an image. It's a book about simulacra that itself becomes a simulacrum like a work of art in an age of mechanical reproduction. Oh my God, really? All right, anyone who, like me, posts uh, philosophy quotes on Instagram to appear deep, 
you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's some good value add uh, without doing any real work. There are exchanges of value taking place here. And by associating myself, already a simulacrum of myself, with intellectual commodities by placing them in the frame with me, some of this edgy intellectualism rubs off on one commodity and gets onto the other. You'll probably also see this when uh, intellectual types opt to be interviewed in front of their bookshelves. Actually, your, your camera zoom background probably communicates a whole lot of how you wanna be interpreted as a sign, how you wanna signify yourself. You can have books or gaming paraphernalia, but nothing beats this, these shelves with fake gauche shit on them that signify, to, to morons at least, sophistication and commitment to Western civilization. There's an exchange of signification taking place here in the world of signs. And most would agree that the world of signs and screen persona, uh, Zoom meetings, is less real than some other one. One of solid handshakes and real bodies. And while this matrix references this matrix, which gives you simulation and simulacra as a simulacrum, the matrix is actually a reproduction of some much older thought experiments. There have been philosophers who believed either that the premise of the matrix is true or that it could be true. Socrates tells this story about an allegorical cave that normies are trapped inside, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Descartes, who didn't actually believe this, by the way, said that it's possible that there's a magical evil demon making us think that the world in front of our faces is real when it isn't. If this were the case, we'd have no way of knowing any better. But fortunately for Descartes, uh, God is real and cares about us knowing true things. So he wouldn't let that happen to us. Whew. And halfway between Socrates and Descartes are the Gnostics who split the difference. They said, yes, we're in a fake world. And God, the same God Descartes was talking about, the God of the Bible, is the magical evil demon, a demi-urge who trapped us here in this fake world to keep us ignorant and stupid. You know, as far as theologies go, this one seems pretty good. This new matrix has its own demiurge who wants to keep Neo contained within the reality by convincing him that it's insane to question appearances, that it's insane to question him. And that is pretty much the limit of anything uh, worthwhile in this film. Just turn it off after 25 minutes. Uh, because the purpose of the rest of the film is to convince you as viewer that you still love that original so much that you want to see it made again with more CGI and that you also want to see the inevitable sequels, uh, spin-off series, and any other content that they can get out of this IP. The Matrix exists so as to perpetuate the Matrix itself by ringing a little Pavlovian nostalgia bell in front of your face. It's content time, everyone. Now, all these people are skeptical with respect to the world that's right in front of their faces. You can't even trust your own appearance to yourself because you too are your own fantasy. What is closest to you is not to be trusted and real value is to be found somewhere else. For nostalgists, real value is being lost or we could find it in a past. For religionists, who are all just Platonists anyhow, real value is somehow beyond these mere appearances. And for the revolutionary, real value hasn't yet arrived. Here's what's funny, here's what's funny though. My view, the correct view, is that held by the villain of the film who wants Thomas to stay in the world. And he's right, even if the film itself denies it. Because there is no outside simulation. Il n'y a pas d'or simulation. Which is true love, of course, in Matrix 4. Ugh. Thomas takes the red pill again, but guess what? He's still trapped in the film, and we're trapped there with him, in content land, in its imaginary, and it's that imaginary that's getting thinner and thinner. You take the red pill, and this is still there 
the following day. The analyst tells Thomas to focus on his voice and what he sees directly in front of him. See so what that is? Tangibility, the other. He tells Thomas to feel, to touch, to listen to the body that he is, to feel friction, to focus, to enjoy awareness. And Thomas cannot do any of that because he's too obsessed with the fantasy of the real and the fantasy that he's a superhero, the fantasy that he's a savior who can fly away. I'm not that and you aren't that. We're bodies made up of the same stuff as everything else. Uh, you could say a fold in reality. We are in a, in a matrix, but it's because we choose to be. <laughs> From childhood, every, every one and many things to do get draped in our fantasies about the fantasies of desire, uh, fantasies contained in language, of coherence. But that doesn't mean that everything is only fantasy. Fantasies are created. Now here's, here's what each of these people all forget. Um, doubting the existence of the world already presupposes a profound level of experience and knowledge of the world on your part. Experience built here, uh, where you learn to eat, where you learn to walk without bumping into things, where you learn that there are correct and incorrect uses of language and ways to speak. Can you tell me what you do with, um, with your money? Put it in a piggy bank. What happened to your other money? I left it at the movie store. And what happened to it, do you think? And the boys tickets. Most of your experience and most of your day still is spent using these skills and habits so often that we forget we're even doing them. And then we forget that that world is still there. So the whole act of doubting the existence of the world is a very complex, abstract mental exercise that can only be performed by someone who is already intimately, concretely embedded in the world that they are now doubting. <sighs> So if you're going to doubt something, would it first be the entire world, the food in your stomach, the fact that you know how to stand and speak at the same time, the fact that you think most of the time without thinking about thinking, the fact that you can get up to get a glass of water without even realize that you're doing it. Are you going to doubt that mountain of experience that you've developed over years and years with measurable physical effects in terms of your abilities. The fact that the world is so familiar to you that you forget it's even there most of the time, or does it make a little more sense to doubt your doubt about all that, which itself is contingent on that mountain of experience. Bodies are at home in the world. So at home, in fact, that you can leave yours behind while your mind goes wandering off to worlds that don't even exist. So at home, in fact, that you can leave it behind while you spend all day arguing on Twitter or getting enraged by events occurring on the other side of the world or by offering solutions to the great problems of history to anonymous strangers on the internet. All the while, you're a body. And so at home that most of the time you forget it is even there. The question of philosophy, or at least good philosophy, is not how to escape the world, how to get out of all this bullshit. The question of philosophy is how to find yourself where you already are. And if you're feeling homeless, you might start by remembering how you got here, because that's 20, 30, 40 years of experience that you're working with. And it'd be a shame to just forget all that. If you don't want to take my word for it, then I'll, I'll read you the words of a real philosopher. One of the best. I have modified it a little. Is my body a thing? Is it an idea? It is neither, being the measure of the things. We will therefore have to recognize ideas that are not alien to the flesh, that gives them their axes, their depth, their dimensions. But once we have entered into this strange domain, one does not see how there could be any question of leaving it. Our flesh, as the flesh of things, the actual, empirical, tangible, 
by a sort of folding back, exhibits a tangibility that is not the shadow of the actual, but the principle on which it is based. For every thought known to us occurs in a flesh. So all that, all the loudness, all these technologically and ideologically mediated abstractions, these frictionless experiences of lights and sounds and images and words, they aren't going anywhere, but you're not trapped by them either. They're designed to try to elicit responses in you to think that they are all that matters. But at least right now, it's actually in your power to shut them up. And what you're left with is that more humble world, a world that almost always disappears, but it's full of textures, colors, smells, tastes, melodies, the everyday. It's where you took your first steps, first ate solid food, said your first word, and it's still here, and you're still home here. And this, my friends, is the real motherfucking red pill.